Hi everyone, it's Kathy Drew from Gina's Bernina Sewing Center. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Have you ever wondered about how to do applique? Well, in today's video, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite notions and tools that I use to get the job done. And hopefully it will help you get started with applique as well. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. So as you can see, I've got an assortment of things set out for you to look at and for us to talk about. And what we're going to applique today will be this watermelon. Now, when you're uh, looking at the patterns, and especially if it's a quilt book of patterns, make sure you check to see if they want the design reversed. So that's about the only thing that you'll have to be cautious about is some of the patterns will ask you to reverse it. And the easiest thing that you can do is just run it through through your uh, copy machine and reverse it that way. The product that I like to use, and we always use this at Gina's, is uh, Steamacine 2. Now, Steamacine comes, you can buy it by the yard, or you can also buy it by the sheet. So I usually buy mine by the yard and I keep it rolled up in, in a nice little bundle and protected. And we love Steamacine too because it has two fin coverings on it. These coverings are almost like a parchment paper, so you can easily see through them to trace your design, as you can see. Now, one side of the covering on the Steam and Seam 2 has a yellow grid on it, and that is the side you're going to trace your design. And if I flip it over, you'll see that the other side does not. And uh, so we're going to trace our design, but I wanted to show you something. Uh, this design is coming out of just a little clip art book that I happen to have and what I want to be cautious of is I want the rind of the watermelon to be in my background so what that means is that I'm going to cut that piece just a little bit larger than the center of the watermelon itself so I will mark myself just a few little dotted lines on this pattern just so that I can be sure that this piece will be a little bit larger in the right area and then my red or pink piece, whichever you plan on using, will go on top of that edge. Okay, so I'm going to position my steam -a seam down and I'm going to go ahead and get that traced. And so I won't forget that. I'm going to go ahead and trace that inner line that I just drew in first. Now the pen that I am using is a Micron pen. You can trace these out with any uh, marking tool that you want because keep in mind that this part of the uh, steam -a seam that we are tracing on will be removed so you don't have to worry about any of this showing up in your stitching. Now I'm not the best tracer when I'm standing up but I think you'll get the point. We'll try to neaten it up a little bit when I do my cutting. All right, so I've almost got that rind done. And then on that same piece, I'm just gonna slide it down and I'm going to trace what would be the red or pink part of the watermelon. And I know you guys know how to trace, but in doing this video, it's just easier for me to just go ahead and do it. All right, I've got him pretty well done. And like I say, I'm not a good tracer standing up. So, okay. We're going to cut these pieces apart just to make them a little bit easier to handle because the rind, of course, is going to go on our green fabric. And this will go on our red. Now, I don't want to go ahead now at this point and cut it out on the drawn line because I want to make sure that when I cut, I'm going to have it e adhesive all the way to the edge. So we're just going to trim it off just to make it a little bit easier to handle. Nothing major here. All right, so I'm going to take my green fabric. This is a batik. 
And it's really hard to tell the right and the wrong side of this, so I'm just going to say this is my wrong side. And I'm going to peel off the ungridded portion of the steam -acine. And it leaves a very tacky surface on the back. And I'm just going to position that in place and smooth him down. And while we're doing that, let's do the same thing for our red. Now, the thing about uh, steam -acine 2 is you can continue to reposition this, which is wonderful when you're doing the placement on your background fabric. You can reposition and get it exactly where you want it. Now, do you understand why I wanted to wait until I actually uh, was doing my cutting so that when I cut on that drawn line of the design, I am assured that I have adhesive all the way to the edge. And did you also notice that we have not fused it down with the heat of the iron? That's another thing that makes it great to work with. And so now we've got this part cut. And I will do my rind. Like I said, I'm going to try to neaten up and smooth out these wobbly lines from my shaky hand when I'm doing my cutting. Okay, so we've got them both cut out. And I'm going to move my book aside. Oh, and listen, while I'm thinking about it, I know some of you are going to be asking me uh, who uh, made the pattern of the quilt that's behind me. And that is called The Friendship Strips and Scraps by Edita Sitar any of you are interested. Now this is my background fabric. Got my little iron heating up. You know I love my little Alyssa iron. This is going to be our background fabric. And remember how we cut the rind a little bit bigger. That's so that it will fit underneath air watermelon. So we may have to do some repositioning and that's what makes this wonderful. To get the backing off of the, um, the green fabric, simply crimp it to the wrong side or to the remaining paper side right there. Just crimp it over and pull it off. And we're just going to position it in place. You can smooth it and it will stay on, but yet if you need to reposition, you simply pull it off and it will still be tacky enough for you to reposition. And there again, that is steam -a -seam too. Once again, we're going to crimp to the paper side, just a little corner, and that will allow it to lift. And then we are going to position our watermelon. So, as you can see, it's going to might be really handy to be able to reposition our watermelon piece, being able to lift it up. See right there, my edge was coming over. Try one more time. So, isn't that wonderful to be able to do that repositioning? And we have it. Smooth it, and then when you're happy with how you have it placed, then you're going to fuse it with the iron. It only takes maybe four or five seconds of heat. You can use steam a seam or it can use steam with this product. I usually flip mine over and I don't have any steam on uh, or in my iron right now, but I usually will flip it over and position the iron on the back as well. And as you can see, we are fused and ready to stitch. Now, before I get to the sewing machine and start stitching out our design, I want to talk to you about the threads that I'm going to be using. 
I like to put a 60 weight cotton thread in my bobbin. That keeps the uh, bulk out of the stitching and allows you to get a really fine, beautiful satin stitch. Works perfect with any type of machine embellishment, anytime I do decorative stitches or anything like that, I always use a lightweight thread in my bobbin. So this is Mettler's 60 weight uh, cotton and it's going to really go a long way especially if you have those big bobbins in in your uh, machine it's really going to put a lot of thread on that bobbin because it is a much lighter weight so this is what i always use in the bobbin i usually just buy it in white because i don't have any reason to have it in colors uh, we can make sure that uh, none of the bobbin thread shows on the top all right and I like to also use a 40 weight embroidery thread in the needle. This is a polyester embroidery thread. This is isocord. It is also a lighter weight thread. This is the same thread that we use whenever we're doing uh, machine embroidery. So it's perfect. And it allows you to really do some fine tuning on that stitch length to get the prettiest satin stitch that you can get. Now we're gonna be doing blanket stitches also and some other things this morning, but I just wanted to comment about uh, how beautiful you can fine tune your stitch length with a lighter weighted thread. So, so this, this is the 40 weight Isocort embroidery thread. You can get it in cotton or rayon, whatever your preference is. I just like to use polyester because it's color fast and very strong thread, okay? And of course, I talked to you about the micro pen. Okay, do. And so that covers pretty much the threads and so forth that you're going to be using. I also like to use a Microtex, either a size 80 or a size 90 needle in my machine as well. Uh, that's pretty much my favorite needle. I buy it all the time. And you can also get it in the chrome, which uh, increases the longevity and doesn't let the needle hit up and, uh, heat up and cause uh, skip stitches for you. So that should cover that. And when we get to the machine and get it threaded, we'll talk about the presser feet. I hope that helped. Okay, I've got my uh, machine threaded and I am going to now go in and make some adjustments to the settings of the machine to make it function um, better for me in the technique that I'm gonna be doing, which is applique. So, um, I'm going to go into settings, which is represented by what looks like a set of little gears. And this is on the Bernina uh, 880 Plus. And those of you on some of the other models are gonna have all these options available to you. But what you'll do is you'll tap your home icon first, the little house that I'm pointing to at the top. And then once you're in there at the bottom of the screen, you should see the settings icon. And you'll find all the things that I'm talking about that we're going to be adjusting the machine uh, to help us with our applique. The first thing I want to do though is going to be on my main screen. And you'll notice that I have my needle uh, set in the needle up position, which means that whenever I stop sewing, my needle is gonna stop up out of the fabric. I'm gonna immediately uh, change that by tapping it, and now I have set it to where the needle will always uh, stop down in my fabric. So if I have to pivot to turn sharp curves or corners, uh, that's gonna be very beneficial to me. We're gonna go into our settings screen now. And once we're in that particular screen, you have six categories, but we're gonna go into our sewing settings, which was represented by that straight stitch and zigzag. Now, there's a picture of a hand um, that is pointing toward buttons, and this represents all those buttons that are external or on the outside of your machine that you might be using, like your thread cutter button or your needle down button, all of those that are on the outside of the machine. So we're going to go into that particular category, and it's going to show pictures of all those different icons that you have on your screen or uh, that represent those buttons. So on the needle down, 
I think I want my machine to lift my presser foot a little for me so that I don't have to stop and push my presser foot lifter button or use a needle down or something like that. So we're going to go into this needle down icon and you'll notice that there are three pictures. One of them shows the needle going down in the fabric and the presser foot remaining in the down position. And right now that's the one that is selected for me. I'm gonna to go to the next one over and I'm gonna select it because I want the machine to slightly lift the presser foot for me once it puts that needle down in the fabric. Now you'll notice there's another option here. That's if you're working on much heavier fabric and you need a higher lift but we're going to leave ours right here and then I'm going to use the breadcrumb and go back a screen and I'm going to have my scissors because I want to add a few features to my um, button on the front of the screen that I press when I wanted to cut my threads so when I go in to that particular icon, let me go back in case I did that too fast it's a little button with a picture of your scissors on it I'm going to tap that and my option for the uh, cutting tool is to also have it secure my threads. So I'm going to tap that and I think for my applique, I'm going to select this diamond shape securing stitch that it offers us. And I think that will be perfect. So what's going to happen now that I've programmed that is before the machine cuts my threads, both needle and bobbin, it will secure those threads. And that's a great feature to have. And I think we're through in that particular screen. Now we're going to be using the 20 foot. So let's just go ahead and go in by tapping the presser foot icon. Now some of you don't have uh, this as an option to tell the machine um, that you want what foot you're going to be using. But those of you that do, I want you to just be aware of the screen and on the top of the screen you'll notice that there is a search icon and I'm going to tap that and put in presser foot 20 and it's going to bring up all the 20 feet. We have three, one for the five millimeter machines, one for the nine millimeter and a 20D which is for the nine millimeter and dual feed machines. Now I'm going to use 20C today so I'm going to select that and you'll notice that the number on the left of my screen now reflects that presser foot. Okay, I think we're about ready, but I want to point out we are in the practical sewing screen at this time. We're going to go into our program of quilting stitches, which is represented by that little, uh, looks like a quilt block, and I'm going to tap that. And it's going to list all the different stitches that as a quilter that you might want to use. Now we can go in and set those set, uh, stitches at the width and the length that we want. And the machine will remember those settings for us until we turn it off or clear them out. And we're going to start out sewing, I think, with our satin stitch. Now on the uh, 880, it's stitch 1354. On some of the other models from the 4 Series on up, you'll probably want to check your manual for the satin stitch, okay? Now it comes up at a stitch width of 2.5, which is very small, and a stitch length of 0.6. Both of those are completely adjustable. You can fine tune your stitch width or your length to anything you need it to be. So we're going to run some test runs in just a second. Uh, the other stitch that I'll be using is 1329, which will be our blanket stitch. And there again, we can adjust it to whatever look that we want it to have. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. So I'm going to reposition the camera and try to zoom in to where you can see the stitching a little bit better. And uh, we'll get some sewing done. The presser feet that you're looking at are the ones that are most commonly used for uh, basic machine applique. So you'll see this is the 20C, which is a much larger foot than the 20 for our 5.5 millimeter machines. Now, I have both of these feet because there are times when I'm working on maybe something really small or that I have, uh, I'm using much tinier stitches that I am 
enjoy using the 20 even though I have a 9 millimeter machine. So I wanted to show you all uh, the differences in the size, but to tell you also that if you've had uh, another Bernina that was a 5 millimeter, you can still use this number 20 on your 9 millimeter machine. If you look at the bottom of the presser foot, you're going to notice that the bottom is cut out at an angle. And I love this because when you're working with a thick satin stitch, it, it, this allows for that thickness to feed out from under toward the back of the foot. But having these angles allows it to make it easier for you to turn a curve with that bulkier stitch that uh, you probably would use with your applique. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this presser foot on and I'll stick with the 20 uh, primarily because I think it'll make it a little bit easier for you to see uh, the stitching that I'm going to do. I'm going to go into my quilt program of stitches, just like we talked about earlier, and I'm going to select stitch 1354, and I'm going to widen that stitch width, um, I think I'll go up to maybe three and a half, and then I'm going to stitch a test run uh, down along the side. Now, whenever you get a stitch width, much wider than a three, you may find that your fabric will try to tunnel in your stitching. And so if that happens, if you see that pinching up or tunneling of your fabric, you may need to use a stabilizer. And if you look, you can see that I have got a couple of layers of tearaway stabilizer. Now, I normally would probably use my Ultra Clean and Tear, but um, for this, I, I was out of it, so I'm gonna stick with the uh, two layers of lightweight tearaway. Now let's sew a little bit of our stitch and see if we like how it looks because we might want to alter the length of that stitch or the width of that stitch. We don't want the stitching to overpower our uh, applique at all. And let me cut and you'll see the securing stitches and then it cuts. And you know what, that looks pretty good. I think that stitch length could be just a little bit shorter. Uh, so I'm gonna probably go down to a 0.5 on that and we'll test it again. Let's see how this 0.5 looks. So these are the things you always wanna do before you start your project is uh, run you a little tester. Yes, that looks much better. Can you all see how much prettier that looks? Okay, so I like that, and I'm gonna stick with that, and that's a stitch that I'm gonna use around the rind of the applique. Now, I want to give the appearance of this being in the background, so that's why we overlap the red on top. And I'm actually gonna start my sewing right up against the red of the watermelon. And whenever I do applique, one thing that I like to do is I like to move my needle position as far to the right as it will go. And the reason I do that is I can then use the inside edge of the right toe as a means of lining up my fabric. Okay, so let me see. And you know what? There's one other thing that I forgot to go into settings and do and I'm gonna do it very quickly right now, is I want to make sure that my securing stitch at the beginning is also um, engaged because I want my thread secured at the beginning as well. Now I use my presser foot button to lower my presser foot and that way I can fine tune that positioning. And I hope I can explain this, but what I'm going to do I am going to actually stop my stitching an equal distance to the width of my stitch from this point. Now that may sound a little crazy to you, but I think once you see me do it, you'll be okay. I'm gonna do a needle down to make sure that my uh, needle is going to hit right along the edge, and it certainly did, and we'll begin our, our stitching. Now I'm gonna let you watch me. I'm going to stitch down 
until I'm just about a distance from the edge that equals the width of my stitch. So did y'all see that? And we'll go down one more stitch. All right. Now I'm going to turn my fabric and I'm going to raise my presser foot and my needle out. And then I'm going to move over and line the edge up because I don't want that really bulky stitch when you stitch an overlap. So I'm going to lower my presser foot, let it hover, line the edge up to the inside edge of that toe and start my stitching again. And then that way I don't get that bulky edge of where you sew over it twice with that satin stitch. And I love be able, being able to guide my fabric along the inside edge of the toe of my presser foot. Now if you should have to pivot, now this curve is not really too tight, but if you find that you feel like you just can't stay on that edge, then put your needle down on the outer edge or the wider edge of the curve. Your foot will hover because that's how we've set it and then give it a slight turn and continue until you need to do your pivot again. We want the bulk of our stitch to be on the applique itself. That's what's going to hold it and keep it secured to our background fabric. I'm trying to speed up a little so y'all don't have to be bored while I'm stitching all the way around this. And I want you to notice too, a lot of people think they have to hurry and turn their fabric, but when you have your satin stitch set at such a short stitch length, the fabric moves fairly slow. So you don't have to be in a hurry for your guiding, you can just relax. All right, once again, I'm going to sew down almost to the edge of my corner. I like to put my needle down in the outside edge, so I'm just going to do a needle up and a needle down again. All right, and then I'll go ahead and turn it, lift my needle, and line and pack up to a needle down if you want to. There we go. See where it's going to hit? Perfect, and then we have decreased all that bulk in that corner. And when I get back up to the red, I'll stop and I'll press my thread cutter and I have told it to secure my stitches. And we've got this applique finished. All right, so see how that corner looks? Can you see that? Looks much better. It's not a big old hump right there from where you have two runs of your satin stitch one on top of the other. All right, let's thread up with our thread for our watermelon. I'm ready to think about spring and summer anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and pull, I don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and pull my thread tail down and get it under the foot so I can hold on to it. Now let's go in and I'm still in my quilt program of stitches and I'm going to select stitch number 1329. And that's what we're going to use to stitch our watermelon with. Once again, I'm going to move that needle position all the way to the right. Um, let's make it just a little bit wider. I think I'm going to put it up on about three. Okay. 
and I'm going to line that edge. And I really don't like to start on a point or a corner. I prefer to start, you know, somewhere else. We could have started up here. I like to be able to start somewhere that when I'm approaching where I began, I can kind of make sure that it's going to end nice and pretty for me. So we'll start maybe right about here. Okay, now we want the bulk of our stitch, of course, to be on the applique, so the right swing of the needle is going to fall off the edge, and the left swing is going to pierce the applique. Now this is just our basic um, uh, blanket stitch. There are some in there that are much, much heavier, but for today's video, we're going to use the lighter version so that you can keep up with the stitching on it a little bit. So let's just begin, and you're going to notice a securing stitch. And then we start with our blanket. There again, the right swing of the needle. Now see how I'm getting to where it's a little difficult for me to keep the edge up against the inside edge of the toe of the foot. When that needle goes down on the right this time, I'm going to slightly move my fabric. So yeah, that's a good way to guide. So here we go again. See how that, because if we don't do our pivoting, your stitches are going to be angled. So whenever it becomes difficult for you to keep that cut edge up against the inside edge of that toe, to stop with the needle down on the outside edge or the wider area. Look at that. See how that angle's going in? And pivot and straighten it up. Now with a blanket stitch, I'm gonna get that thread tail out of my way. With a blanket stitch, it's really hard to know if it's gonna end up to where you can do that perfect pivot on that point. So sometimes you might just have to make it work. Oh, I think we're gonna look out. It looks pretty good, but let's see. I think probably I need to maybe cheat just a little. So I'm gonna take that needle up out of that fabric and move my fabric on my own and make sure that that needle falls right on that point. Now you don't have to be this careful, but I do it. So, you dog, and we're gonna turn and take one across the point and turn again and then approach down the other side. Got a nice straight edge here so we don't have to worry about pivoting so we can make up for some time. Got another one of those corners popping up on us. wonder if we'll be lucky this time. Nope, I think we're still going to have to, oh, maybe not. Bingo, we made it. So the needle's down on the point, and I like to turn and stitch across that point, and turn again with the needle down on the right, and continue. I'm getting off my line again, so I've got a needle down on the wider area, outside edge, and pivot. I love having the hover preset to where the foot lifts for me and I don't have to press a button or use my um, presser foot lever. Or if you don't have this option on your machine, don't forget about Bernina's fabulous knee lift, the freehand system. You can have that set up and it'll be perfect for applique. Just use your knee. there we made it and I'm going to tell it that I'm finished with my stitching so I am going to set my thread cutter and it's secured and my stitching is finished and we have a precious little watermelon I hope that helped you a little bit with your applique oh we need to do some something decorative in there. Uh, you could put little buttons in, or you could pull up one of your decorative stitches off your machine and put them in in black. That would be really cute. And uh, there's all different things that you could use for the center. Okay? 
Now I have something else I wanted to throw in just a little bit. A lot of people like to do uh, what they call blind applique. And what that is, is where the uh, edges of the fabric are actually turned under. Because here we were working with cut edges, raw edges, that they like to have that hand look effect. So um, there are lots of different ways to do that. They use glue and different things, but I thought I would show you very quickly, uh, maybe a quick way for some of your simpler patterns, what you can do. I have um, cut this time on the drawn line of the circle that I put on my steam seam tube. And I'm going to trim around the circle, leaving approximately a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now, um, I'm not necessarily going to make you sit and watch me do this whole thing, but I do want to do enough to give you a general idea of what we're going to do. Is that camera zoom back enough? It's a little bit too close. Okay. And then we are going to snip and maybe a little quarter of an inch intervals in along this edge. And then before I remove this paper, I'm just going to take my fingernail and press and put a crease in that fabric along the edge and that paper will really help me do that um, and keep it right on that that guide okay and then afterwards we can peel off our steam seam and when we push these over the steam seam will hold them in place Give them a good press there with your thumb. Okay, and that's just a quick way on some of your simpler designs that you could get a turned edge for your applique. Okay, and then you can neaten it up on that other side when you look at it. So I have got one ready, and we are going to stitch it. And this time, I'm going to use a different presser foot. I'm going to use presser foot number 23. And I like this little foot. It is actually called the blind applique foot, but we use it for multiple things. Uh, we call we use it for the blind applique because it has that little channeled out area in the bottom of the foot that you can butt the fold of that fabric of your applique up against the side and it will hold it securely. It also has an area channeled out at an angle in the back that's going to make it easier for you to turn those uh, curved edges. I'm going to slide the opening of the foot where the needle travels up my needle, reach under, and pull my thread down. I always like my thread to be under my presser foot so I know exactly where it is. Now for this stitch, there is a stitch in your machine. It's 1331 that's set up. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to stitch just a little of it. My machine wants me to tell it what presser foot I have on, so let me do that. And now it will let me do my stitching. So here's the stitch that they've got in your quilt program for you to use. And it works really well for this. There's some other stitches that you can use also. I'm going to make mine much tinier than that because I want it to be less visible. So I've got mine set on a stitch width of about 1.5. And if you wanted to bring those stitches closer together, by all means, you could adjust the stitch length also. Now let's take a look at the stitch so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the program setting. And then I've just made mine a little bit smaller. All right. 
and I'm going to position this edge into the ditch of the foot. Alrighty. And I want to make sure that the very, that the stitch that it swings on the left, it hits my fabric. And when it swings on the right, it's going to clear that little edge, that little lip. And then I'm just gonna slowly stitch around so you guys can watch. And this just is trying to give you a little bit more of a hand look finish. And that's enough. I don't want to make you watch me do all the way around. And I'll show you how it looks. And that is, let me fold that back so maybe the light, that is the blind applique. Let me see if I can zoom in a little for you. And see that a little better. Isn't that pretty? So that's just another look for applique that you can use. Let me show you that edge, that corner that I did earlier uh, where I showed you how to not put so much bulk by turning and pivoting and going over the same area twice on the corner. So um, hopefully this will help you all and uh, give you a few things that you can try and get ready to do some beautiful applique. It's one of the prettier things that you can um, add to your quilts or your garments. I love adding uh, applique to garments as well. So I hope you enjoyed that and of course if you have any questions be sure and put them in the comments and I'll try to get back with you just as quickly as I can. As always, if there's anything we can help you with, you can reach us at info at genusbernina.com or check our website, www.genusbernina.com. Hope you all have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me.